This is Carl at National RV Detroit, and I'm going to walk you through this 2022 Flagstaff Superlight Model 27 FBIK Front Bedroom Island Kitchen. All right, so we'll just go over some of the features of the trailer. This is a kind of a walkthrough video. So, okay, first of all, we have power stabilizer jacks right here. You'll have one switch on on the rear and one switch up front. One switch controls both rear jacks, and the one up front will control both front jacks, of course. Now you don't lift the trail or the trailer with these uh, these stabilizer jacks. You just stabilize it, take the wiggle out of it. Now, of course, this this is a cooktop that pulls out. Um, you remember, if you remember, you have to plug it in here. There's a quick connect, of course, and a cord, so you got to plug it in to use it. Um, while we're standing here, this hole you see right here. Um, let me see if I can get a better picture. You can see that shaft back there, hopefully, with a with a pin through it. Well, there's a there's a a, a jack handle. I'll show you on the other side. A crank that you could put through that hole or um, yeah, put through there and hook, put it on that, that shaft with the pin through it. You can actually crank the slide out in manually. So that, that one would crank this up the off door slide out. Then when we get to the other side, there'll be a hole on that side where you can crank this door side one that we're looking at right now in. So you can always get yourself out of trouble if you need to. Also, we've got outside speakers, of course. Um, this, this is a range hood vent. If you can see, there's two tabs, one on each side. You got to push both those up, and the baffle inside will flap freely. You want the baffle flapping freely when you're when you're turning the the fan on in the range hood because you want it to vent to the outside. So, anytime you're going to vent, you want to open that up. Otherwise, keep it shut. Of course, we got folded steps with adjustable legs. Now, there's a griddle that comes with this. You hang it right on here. And you get a hose with it, of course, and the, the LP hose will connect right here to this quick connect. Okay, and it goes right there. There's a TV bracket that comes with it, so you can put it on the back of your TV and hang it out here. There's signal out here and power, so you can actually, uh, um, you know, watch TV outside. Uh, um, and it's like I said, this is mounted into a good solid piece. It's got a backing plate, so it's a sturdy place to put it. Okay, now here's another one of these holes. And it's hard for me to get down to show you, but trust me when I say there's another another shaft with a pin through it. Here's the, the switch for the two front stabilizers. This right here is in case you decide to um, buy a, a solar panel to charge the battery. Although this one does have a solar panel on it. But this is strictly for a battery charger, okay? Um, there's a power tongue jack up and down and light of course now if you pull this cord, or this cord <laughs> if you pull this this plug here you could actually crank it manually so we'll walk over here and look at the crank so I can get that out of the way so this crank right here if you can see it this one is for the power tongue jack in case of an emergency this is the one I told you about that you can crank the, the uh, slide rooms in and out with in an emergency. You can see the the uh, end of it has a cylinder with a with a, a slot cut in it so that accepts the uh, the shaft with the pin through it. Okay? Also what we're looking at here, well, this is your griddle, this is your rack that it hangs on, this metal table here is just a utility ta table that hangs next to the grill, um, and that's your dump hose or your dump hoses. There's a, a uh, to convert, to convert 30 amp down to 15 slash 20, that sort of thing, okay? All right, so, back out here. So you have two 30-pound LP tanks with an automatic changeover regulator. You have two um, uh, deep cycle marine batteries. They're wired together at uh, 12 volts, so they stay at 12 volts, it just doubles the storage capacity. So. That's all about doubling because this this inverts this trailer inverts power, um, meaning that it, it can turn a um, 12 volt DC into 110 AC. Uh, so that's why you have two of them mainly. The other one is your your solar panel needs some place to store the energy. So the the sun that's being or the the, the electricity that's being uh, converted from the sunlight also goes and stores in these batteries. 
Now keep in mind also that this is a kill switch for the battery, if you can see it. It's way down there, but you can shut the batteries off if you need to. But generally you're going to have them on because when you're towing down the road, uh, your, the alternator on your tow vehicle is going to be charging your batteries. And then when you're plugged in, your power converter is going to be doing that, okay? All right. Let's move on a little bit here. Okay. So here's your, your uh, sewer hook up here. You can see you got valves. There's a black valve there, a gray valve there. I'm sure there's going to be two gray tanks in this trailer. Um, always dump the black first, toilet water and waste. Then you dump the gray with sink and shower water to sort of wash it out. Um, then you leave your black tank valve open and you'll come to this right here and you'll hook the hose up at the dump station right here to the black tank flush and uh, you'll turn it on like I said keep the valve open on the black tank turn on it'll spray out the inside of the black tank clean off the sensors that sort of thing it's a good thing to do if you, if you have a working hose at the dump station always do this uh, city water hookup right here so that's the most common way to get water to the trailer if you, don't, if you go to a campground that does not have plumbing on the campsite, you can pre-fill your fresh water tank right here and then just use the onboard pump to pump water. Everything will work. All the plumbing will work just like you have city water even though that you'll, um, you'll be uh, pumping it out of the tank. Also, this is for winterizing, just so you know. You're going to draw the, the antifreeze through the system uh, through that hose, okay? Um, uh, satellite cable and satellite in the, through to the entertainment center right there okay you got a utility light this is your water heater the switches to control it are inside okay I just need to show you that this is where you drain it it takes an inch and a sixteenth six point socket with an extension and a ratchet or a bar um, but you want to drain that if there's any period of time going between your camping trips you really don't want to leave the water in there to get all, uh, you know, all uh, egg, smell like rotten eggs and, and that sort of thing. So you can drain it right there, of course. Um, just so you know, the switches are inside. The electric heating elements behind here to run an electric. This is the gas burner here. And like I said, those operate from inside the trailer. Let me show you that when we get in there. Come on now, there we go. Okay, so moving on. Your low point drains right there. That's just uh, the lowest point of the plumbing for when you winterize. All right, this is your 50 amp cord here. You can see we got it reduced down to a 30. You get the reducer with you. And then there was another reducer I showed you, which reduces down to a 15 slash 20. Just remember, you can't run the air conditioner on, uh, on 15 or 20 amps. So everything else is fine. This is just an outside shower. More, that's your cord again, 50 amps, 30 feet long. Um, this is pre-wired for a backup camera. You see the housing up there, okay? So you can add that very easily. You have a ladder, which is a great thing because the manufacturer states you should check your, uh, your roof and seals every uh, 90 days. So make sure you go up there or have somebody else go up there. Look at all the sealant. Make sure there's no cracking or separation. Make sure there's no place for water to leak in. Make sure there's no damage to your skylight or your vent covers or your roofing material by low branches or road debris flying up there or anything like that. Just give it a good inspection every 90 days and if you, if you see any issues, take care of it immediately. That's important. People do not, generally do not inspect the roof enough, so that's an important thing to do. Alright, so as we come in the door, this is your power converter. Alright, so this converts AC to DC power. So you see you have regular household type circuit breakers like you see at home here and they're labeled that's all 110 120 AC um, then the power is converted to 12 volt DC over here so you got 50, you got 12 volt fuses plus they're all labeled all right um, this is also a battery tender so as long as you're plugged in it's going to sense how much energy your batteries up front need and send it what it needs it'll keep them charged if they're topped off it'll just trickle a couple amps up there if it's low it'll send 15 or 20 amps whatever it needs okay so it also charges or tends your battery um, if any of these blow they'll light up <coughs> excuse me and you can see it through this tinted plastic here okay also I'm going to come around the corner here and this device here let me shut the TV off I was just setting the channels here okay this device here is your your carbon monoxide LP gas detector you can see how it's green it should always be green okay 
Now, uh, this uh, if it tests carbon monoxide, it'll go off. LP gas leak will go off. If that happens, obviously you take everybody outside, leave the door open, shut the gas off at the front, figure out what's going on. If it beeps slowly, it's telling you your battery's low. I'm going to put it through the test here so you can hear that. LP is good, carbon monoxide coming up. And low battery alert. And back to green. It should always be green. If not, get it serviced. Okay. So, this is your control panel. Battery's charged, fresh water's got water in it because we're still setting it up for you. Black, gray one, gray two. Gray one will be the sink and shower, right? And the black tank obviously is for the toilet. Uh, the tank two, which is, is the uh, galley tank, it'll be for the kitchen sink, okay? So two gray tanks, one black tank. As it graduates up in one-third increments, they light up, obviously. Once you get past two-thirds, you've got to start thinking about dumping the gray tank. All right, to turn the water pump on, remember to pump water out of the tank. You do that. You also use that at winterizing. Um, you have tank heaters, so you turn that on when it gets cold out, and it, uh, there's heating pads on your, all, all of your tanks. Your fresh water tank, your, gray, two, your two gray tanks, and one black tank, and, and also another uh, heater by the... Uh, the elbow that goes to the um, general that goes to the uh, the valve, so that keeps that free also. Um, Stands your camping season, of course. To turn on electric, turn on gas. Never turn this on without water in the water heater tank. Always make sure that you got water in there, or you'll burn out the element real quickly. So you got your three slide room buttons, your two awning buttons, and then all your lights here. This last one that says Wi-Fi is the Wi-Fi Ranger. Now on the roof, there's a Wi-Fi Ranger that. Basically, it's, um, it does two things, but its main, main function is a signal booster for public Wi-Fi. So, if you can see, let me move my monitor a little bit. If you can see this tag right here, the top line says uh, Teton uh, 3366, okay? So that's you. So when you, you use your device, your family's devices, you, uh, you look through your Wi-Fi section, and you'll see this. That's, the, that's your Wi-Fi Ranger. So you make up a password and set it so it logs on automatically when it's looking for Wi-Fi, okay? Down here, the bottom line is an address. You type, it, type in a browser, and this will take you to the Wi-Fi Ranger. You'll see everything the Wi-Fi Ranger sees. The temporary password has changed me now, 3366. Uh, you're obviously gonna set up your own password, but that's just a temp password. But you'll be able to look at everything the Wi-Fi Ranger sees, and you'll pick out you know, if the campground has a, a Wi-Fi and they give you a passcode, for example, you'll, you'll find it, you'll sign on to it, put the passcode in, and, and, you, and your Wi-Fi Ranger is connected to the, to the public Wi-Fi. It boosts it really well, it's got a built-in firewall, that sort of thing. And all of your family's devices will hook up automatically, so it makes it real simple. Um, there's a second function to where you can use a SIM card, and it would be a monthly fee to whoever you get your cell phone uh, 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 service from, so that's totally separate it's a, and it's available but uh, generally speaking people use the free part of it and that's that's what I showed you okay and that's where you turn it on okay all right also there are apps you know you can see this so you can always put those on your phone if you choose to okay so you're, you have a two zone thermostat here I'm not gonna go through the whole thing it works like every other thermostat you pick the mode the system the zone heating cooling fan that sort of thing I always run the if they, if they give you an option, always run the fan automatic. Okay, it'll usually be high, low, and auto. Always go with auto. Now this right here is your solar panel. This is your solar controller. So, right now you can see we've got flooded batteries. So there's two flooded batteries. And right now, let me, let me go, go through it here. We're putting out 13.5 volts, which is excellent. That's exactly what you want. I push B again. And um, we're gaining 1.3 amps from the sun. You see this picture of the sun, arrow pointing towards the solar panel. We're gaining 1.3 amps. That's putting put in your battery. Okay. You're 100% charged. And amp hours, 152. So those are your amp hours. Um, a doesn't do anything. That's just for setting it. You only have one battery as far as this is concerned because they're both wired together at 12 volts. So it considers it one battery. Also, um, you've got... Uh, AC right there, right? You have um, a little, I won't open it, a little uh, uh, USB slot 
So if everything's dead and you're in an emergency and you've got a cell phone that's dead, you can plug it right in here and use the solar panel to charge it if you need to. So, okay? Alrighty, so that covers that. Of course you have a televator, <laughs> which goes up and down. I'll just set it down. Which is nice, it gives you counter space when you're not using it. Okay, and um, you have a remote for the TV, which is here. Your sound, which is right here, is the remote for it. Now this plays CDs and DVDs. Let me get my camera work together here, sorry, I, I tend to go all over the place here. CDs and DVDs, it has AM, FM radio. You can stream off this USB here if you choose to. Um, uh, you've got three speaker zones. One is this room, two is the bedroom, and three is outside. Z3 is zone three, that's out, outside. By pushing the Z3 button, you can select a different source and a different volume for outside. So if somebody's watching a video in here, you could, you could go with the FM radio and set the uh, volume by pushing Z3. So you can, you, can, you can have two different sources, one inside the trailer, one outside the trailer, okay? And of course all the usual stuff, Bluetooth and your clock and you've got presets and all that sort of thing. Uh, now this HDMI is an in. So if you wanted to go into the system with a, anything, you know, a, a, a game machine to keep kids busy on a rainy weekend, something like that, um, you, could, you would put it right down here, plug it in, and go straight into it right here with the USB, I'm sorry, with the HDMI, and uh, that's it. It'll, show, it'll work, show on your TV and that sort of thing, okay? All right, so next, now below it is the fireplace. The fireplace works on 110 AC. It's a good heater. Okay, so you can, you can change the appearance of the flame, make it brighter, duller, off, bright, okay? You uh, have up and down with the, your, let me see if I can get to it, with your temperature, you can set the fan speed low and high. Also, you can choose Celsius and Fahrenheit, and it has a timer. So you could set the timer, uh, you know, if it's cool out, you could set the timer to, to turn it on uh, 15 minutes before you get up in the morning, for example. It'll take the chill out. Plus it runs on regular AC power, so you're not going to be using up any of your limited um, propane when you don't need to. So it's, it's good in that sense. Okay. All right. This device here is, it goes, it, it has to do with your, your, tire pressure and your um, temperature of your hubs so it's you program it to do that um, and uh, you, there's all sorts of option, options for it it's good to the you don't get I think there's directions in the packet but you can scan these uh, these doohickeys whatever they're called these things here I don't think doohickeys is, is the correct uh, name of it but anyway that'll take you to a manual and all that so I suppose I should learn the name of that thing, huh? All right, microwave works like any other microwave. Range hood, remember I told you there's the vent outside? Make sure that you uh, open the baffle if you're, gonna, if you're gonna use the fan, okay? So, um, the oven works like any other RV oven. You spark it by turning this one clockwise. I don't know if he's got the gas on here, so we'll see. Oh yeah, so there you have it right there. You got three burners, whoops, three burners and three knobs then you got the oven now the oven's a little different it's got a pilot light all the way to the back at the bottom let me see if I can show you where it's at by sparking it there you go you see it back there so what you do is you go to the oven knob all the way to the right here you go to light which is the pilot light then you depress it and keep it depressed while you're doing this you'll spark it by turning it clockwise until the flame down here lights on the pilot light once it lights you still hold it in for another 10 seconds to heat it up then you go to operating temperature, whatever you want it at. But when you shut it off, the pilot light goes out too. So you have to relight it each time you use it because uh, the pilot light goes off with the oven. Okay, this is, a, this is a cheat sheet for your sound system, by the way. It's a good thing to have and it, and it gives you all the typical, the most common questions anyway about how to, how to use it, okay? All right, keys, which I'll hang right here. This is your packet, of course. Let me pick up the speed here. I'm running out of time. I've only got, I think, 28 minutes with this thing until it starts a new file. This is your, your refrigerator. Um, it's a 12-volt DC refrigerator, I think, I hope. Let me make sure here. 
Let me just read this real quick. Yeah, 12 volt DC. So um, it runs off your battery while you're going down the road and the, and the uh, tow vehicle's alternator will be charging it when you're plugged in. Uh, your power converter down there will be charging, so that keeps it going. Okay, so you can drop the table down, turn it into a bed if you want. Also, you should always keep it down like that when you're traveling. You don't want it to bounce around and, uh, and break a window or dent something. So it, when you're traveling, keep it down in that position. Okay, you have here, let me see what we got here. Okay, let me get this correct. Yeah, so you just have theater, theater seating here, and you can see you've got uh, power there. This is the rip cord to, uh, to operate right here, one on each side. I suppose that's not a rip cord either, but I make up my own names, I think, for when I need to. Let me see that. That's another light there. Okay, so that pretty much covers everything in here. Um, I'm going to move to the bathroom real quick because I've got to pick up steam here. Okay, the, the sink and shower work every, like any other sink and shower, except this thing has a water miser, which is this thing right here, right? So, what it is is a, is a recirculator. It circulates water between the hot water tank and here in a loop, around and around and around while the water heats up. That way you can, ser you can serve water. If you're in an area with a drought, you're not just sending good water down the drain because it isn't warm yet, right? It just keeps going around and around. Also, you're not sending good water into your, your gray tank, take it up storage, so it's twofold. Um, as you're heating up the water, you obviously you put it in this position, you're going to turn the hot water on. It'll just keep cycling around in a circle. Nothing's coming out of here yet. You just watch this and it'll turn like a beige color. Once it does that, you know the water's hot. And then you go to this position and it'll work like a regular shower. So you're just taking water and, and sending it around in a loop, like I said, while it heats up. And once it heats up, you change the position of that lever and it works like a regular shower. You just didn't waste any water or any storage space while you're heating it up. All right. GFCI, keep your mind that all the, the, everything, all the plugs in here are wired through a GFCI, even the one on the outside. So keep that in mind. The toilet works like any other RV toilet. If you have an old one, you can't use them dry. That's the, that's the flush pedal there. So right directly below is the black tank. All right, we're not hooked up to water right now, so although there's, there's water in the tank though, so here let me do this. We'll turn the water pump on, because remember we looked here and there was fresh water in there. Okay, so now it's working. So this is pumping water off out of the tank. So when you get to the campground, you hook up your water and your power, you'll come in here and you'll put one dose of chemical into the bowl. Um, you just read the directions for whatever product you have, they'll tell you how much. Then, after you put it in the bowl, you'll step on the pedal and let about a gallon or so of water go into the tank. There's no way to tell exactly what it is. You'll just get used to you know, how long it takes. It doesn't have to be exactly a gallon. Some people use more. But the main thing is you got to have water and chemical into, in the black tank before you start using the toilet. Otherwise, the smell will be overwhelming and um, it could clog up and you'll only do it once, trust me. So. Make sure you always put water and chemical in there when the black tank's empty. Let's say you're, you're staying at the same campground for another week, but you had to dump your black tank. Well, then after you dump the black tank, you repeat the procedure because it's empty now. Put the chemical in, put the water in, and you're all set. Another thing, it defaults to that full. But if you just touch the pedal, the trap doesn't open, but it fills. Right? So you can fill the bowl as full as you want before you use it. Um, so that's a good feature also. Okay? Keep moving here. We're coming down the home stretch. Also, one last thing. You got a really nice four-speed vent. Make sure you run the vent with the shower. It's important because these, these uh, flag stats are built super tight and you don't, you don't want to create a climate where you get mold or mildew. So you always want to vent when you're using the shower. Um, also, it's a great a good thing when you've got company over and it's getting cool outside and there's a, you know six or ten people sitting out there and they, you start to get condensation from their breaths. You turn this on low or, or higher if you need to, but generally low, it'll suck the uh, condensation right out and you'll never have an issue with it. So that's another good feature. Okay, so all kinds of storage. You can store underneath here. Um, there are also drawers under here. So you can see you can pick up the, you can pick up the, the, uh, the mattress by that handle there and then you have drawers underneath the two. Um, you got a TV hook up a backer plate here. Um, you have your hookups there plus your power. 
Okay. And that's really it for up here. Now, I told you that there's a this also inverts power. Let me see how long I've been talking here. Oh, I gotta go fast. So this is your power inverter. See how I turned it off? Uh, or on, I mean, this is off. So inversion is taking 12 volts from your battery, 12 volt DC, and turning it into a 110 AC that's usable. That's where you do this. You'll only invert when you need to. But let's say, you know, in all only a few, uh, let's see, a few of these sockets are going to be inverted. I'm not sure if they, sometimes they have them. Oh yeah, right here, inverter circuit. So this one inverts, this one's inverted also. So not, not every one of them you can, you can plug a 110 uh, AC uh, device into. So you just have to look, see what it says. But so if you need to use a, you know, a blender or something, an AC blender, and you don't have power, you can just push this. It'll start inverting your battery power. And I just want to get this right here. Your battery power, and then you can do that and then shut off the inverter. Um, and like I said, that goes from uh, DC to AC, and the converter, which I showed you, goes from AC to DC. So you can invert or convert. It goes both ways, which is perfect for, <laughs> for our time. <laughs> That's terrible. I'm sorry. I apologize. Um, let's see what else. Also, they're telling you here that this, this is pre-wired for a second air conditioner, and it would go right in here, right? And uh, if you see this AC prep, it's telling you that there's a wires to hook up a, to a sensor for this, this AC up here if you add it. So you always can add that on and it's an easy install too. So, okay. All right, so I want to thank you for buying your trailer here from National RV Detroit. And uh, remember what I told you about inspecting the roof every 90 days? That's very important. And of course, you have to winterize before it freezes too. And um, if you have any qu issues or questions, you just let us know. We'll, uh, we'll uh, take care of you, okay? Thank you.